Hey my friend, how are you? I hope you are doing fine. In this video, you are going to learn to solve the stone game problem using dynamic programming. The stone game problem is a popular problem on lead code as well as in the world of dynamic programming and is many times asked in interviews. I am going to explain to you a space optimized TP algorithm in this video and also how we approach to build this algorithm. But before we look into the solution, let's check what the stone game problem is. Two players play a game with piles of stones. The piles of stones are even in number and are arranged in a row. Each player takes turns and picks up the piles of stones in his turn. The player with the most number of stones wins. Any player can either pick up a pile of stones from the start of the arrangement or from the end of the arrangement. In this way, the players pick up the stones until there are none left. You are given the privilege to begin the game. You need to find out if you can win the game if you and your opponent plays the game optimally. See the array here. The number at each cell in the array denotes the number of stones in a pile. Check that the number of piles is 4. I repeat, the number of piles is 4. That is an even number. The sum of all the stones will always be odd, hence any possibility of a draw is eliminated. A draw cannot happen because the sum of all the stones is going to be odd always. So if you begin the game, you will either pick the pile of 5 stones from the beginning or the end. Suppose you pick it up from the beginning, then the arrangement remaining will be 3, 4 and 5. Now the opponent will pick the last pile of stones, that is of 5 stones, because the game is played optimally, after which the arrangement remaining will be 3 and 4. You will obviously pick up the pile of 4 stones and end up with 9 stones while your opponent will have 8 stones Hence, you win. Try picking up the pile of 5 stones from the last and find yourself if you can win or not. However, our program must return true because when you are given the chance to start first, you win. Let's now see how to build its dynamic programming algorithm. But before that, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already and hit the bell icon so that you get notified when I release new videos like these in the future. This array beneath the problem array is what we will fill to get our solution. First, we will fill the solution array with exactly the same numbers as problem array. Since we are solving this problem using dynamic programming, hence we will adopt the bottom-up approach. So we start from the smallest sub-problem. What would that be? The problem consists of four piles of stones. So the smallest sub-problem will contain only two piles of stones. Because if you have only two piles of stones in front of you, and I tell you to start first, then you are going to obviously pick up the pile with the greatest number of stones and win, right? So that's what we will focus on in our first iteration. In this case, I'm going to consider a variable test. The initial value I will set to 1 and then I'll use another variable i that is going to start from 0. That means the initial value is 0. I will begin from 0 and will go till the value of test, the current value of test. Don't worry, you are going to understand everything in a minute. Let me start from here because i is equal to 0. So to calculate the value of every cell, we will first find out two values and take the maximum between them. The first value in this case will be 5 minus 3 and the second value will be 3 minus 5. Remember, I pick 5 from the problem array, 3 from the solution array and in the second case, 3 from the problem array, 5 from the solution array. You will understand as I progress why I did so. It will be a comparison between 2 and minus 2. Since 2 is maximum, hence I will populate 2 in this cell. The reason behind doing these operations is to find out which pile of stones will you pick up in order to win. The positive difference indicates that you will win over your opponent. Think it logically. If there are two piles of stones, 
of uh, five and three stones then you will pick up the pile of five stones to win and thus have two stones more than your opponent rather than picking up the pile of three stones and thus have two stones less than your opponent so basically when i express this operation in terms of the two variables i defined earlier then it will come out as maximum between stones i minus dp i plus 1 and stones i plus test minus dp i this variable actually denotes the scope of the sub problem currently it is two piles therefore for every i i plus test will provide the other end of the sub problem let's move to the next sub problem so i increments by 1 over here the first operation will be 3 from the problem array minus 4 from the solution array note the use of i and i plus test here the second operation will be 4 from the problem array minus 3 from the solution array we will have two values minus 1 and 1 the maximum is 1 so i populate 1 in this cell we move to the next cell now i will now be 2 and remember this is still one this is one because we are focusing on smallest sub problems with two piles when i is equal to 2 then first operation will be 4 from the problem array and 5 from the tp array which will give minus 1 the second operation will be 5 from the problem array and 4 from the solution array which will give me 1 the maximum will be 1 so i populate 1 in this cell if you have an arrangement with piles of stones 4 and 5 then you will pick up the second pile and thus you will have one stone more than the opponent so you win here this is what is being calculated here now we have covered all sub problems of two piles of stones let's move to the next set of sub problems for which dist increments to 2 i will reset to 0 now for i equals to 0 the operation will be 5 from the problem array minus the value of this cell from the solution array which is 1 what is this one the one stored in this cell is the result of the sub problem 3 and 4 the result of the subtraction will be 4 here the second operation will be 4 in the problem array minus 2 stored in this cell of the solution array this two is the result of the sub problem 5 and 3 the result of the subtraction will be 2 out of 4 and 2 which is greater 4 so i populate 4 in this cell let me expand the sub problem and make it clear to you the sub problem is 5 3 and 4 now when you are given the first chance then you will either pick up the piles with 5 stones or 4 stones when you pick up the pile with 5 stones then the remaining piles will be of 3 and 4 and it will be the chance of your opponent he will definitely pick up the pile with stones 4 and thus will have one stone more than you in this sub problem we have already calculated it so if you subtract this difference in stones which the opponent has over you by the stones you are going to get in your first chance which is 5 in this case then you get 4 which is the number of stones you are going to have more than the opponent so you win this is the logic behind the sub problem if you pick up the pile with four stones then the opponent will pick up the pile of five stones and in the final sub problem he will have two stones more than you but then when you subtract two from four then it is clear that you will have two stones more than your opponent and hence you win from this side too this is the dynamic programming technique to solve this problem based on this understanding let's quickly find the results of the next few sub problems remember the dist variable is expanding our sub problem now i increases by 1 this is 2 so the next sub problem becomes 3 to 5 the first candidate for this cell will be 3 minus the result of the sub problem 4 and 5 which is stored in this cell so 3 minus 1 will be 2 and the next candidate will be 5 minus the sub problem result of 3 and 4 which is 1 again so 5 minus 1 will yield 4 the max between 2 and 4 is 4 so i put 4 in here i moves 
one step further and its value becomes 2. Now i plus dist will give me 4 and this index is out of scope of the array. We will stop here. If we think logically, then we have covered the two sub problems comprising of three integers in this iteration. Number one was 5, 3, 4, for which we got the result as the number of stones more than the opponent as 4. Number two was 3, 4, 5, for which we got the number of stones more than the opponent as 4 again. Hence, we move to the next iteration for which dist will become 3 and i will reset to 0. The i plus dist now gives us the value as 3. The third index denotes that the scope has widened to the final subproblem, which happens to be our problem as well. The first cell will hold the result of the final problem and if it is positive, then you win. The first candidate will be 5 minus the result of the subproblem 3, 4 and 5, that is 4. So 5 minus 4 will give us 1. The second candidate will be 5 minus the result of the subproblem 5, 3 and 4, which is 4 again. So 5 minus 4 will give us 1 again, since both the candidates are 1. Hence, I populate 1 in this cell. And like I said, if the first cell has a positive value, then you win the stone game. If you pick up the first pile with stones 5, then the other person, when playing optimally, will pick up the pile with 5 stones. This pile of 5 stones. You will then pick up the pile with 4 stones in the next turn and the opponent will pick up the remaining pile of 3 stones. So the opponent got 8 stones in total, you got 9 stones and hence the difference 1. You will find the GitHub link to the Java solution of this problem in the description box. With this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed learning this amazing problem of stone game. Let me know if you got any questions and let me know your feedback about this video. Give it a like, give it a share and keep coming back to Joey's Tech. I look forward to help you with programming and algorithms. Until the next video, goodbye.